and gentlemen, we have Dr. Mose back with us again for the next two hours. We'll be talking, among other things, about China, which we discussed yesterday briefly. Um, please contribute any comments or questions you have. Thank you. Well, thanks for coming again and being patient. Uh, I want to start out by reminding you that uh, today it is estimated by uh, the United Nations Population Bureau that some 15 million people are constantly on the move. So the kind of movement of populations today is one of the great problems that we really don't know to handle. Uh, many of you are aware that if you look at Syria, of course, many of the Syrians went to Turkey. You need tents. Um, I was some of you may have been uh, when the Vietnam conflict uh, ended in April 1975. The Vietnamese, you know, first went to... So guess where they were sent? They were sent to Guam. Because Guam <clears throat> is, as many of you know, The other end is the Navy. Uh, I have gotten to know uh, Admiral Morrison in my work in Micronesia, and so me, and I went to Guam, and we decided to put the camp. We went And I don't know if you recall that home. in Guam, they had nothing but a few pots to cook. There were others who came in with nothing, but they had dollars in their pockets. So what I'm telling you, I found that Refugees really reflect the culture. To come back and article about you know what happened to the refugees on Guam, and I have the article. I could maybe send it, and you could read about. It. But some of the problems were latrines. You know, people have to go to the bathroom. And the other problem was sex. Uh, had the support of the CBs. But the latrines that were built were built really ball in the marine <laughs> model. 
and you're looking at a stupid anthropologist. So every morning, What I neglected to check was that the Marine Corps manual and the Seabees, they built the latrine for adult population, you know, which is logical, but many and burn it up, <laughs> it doesn't burn. And the second problem, and you're looking at the stupid anthropologist, was one morning with Admiral Morrison, he noticed that, uh, I, I, any of you have been to Guam? Okay. You know, You know, next to the ocean. So many of the Vietnamese obviously didn't use the latrines we provided, but they went to the ocean. And Admiral Morrison noticed that uh, some of the younger Vietnamese went into the scrub to have sex. And the American military has a real problem sex. Officially, if you have <clears throat> what you could stay there for 30 minutes, if you couldn't do it in 30 minutes. But anyway, before that happened, they went into the boonies and, you know, did what human beings do, and refugees being nervous and... And even the Marines really don't have a policy. What do you do with, you know, 100,000 refugees who well, obviously some of them have people in the U.S. military. You, you, if you have a bordello in your area, uh, the Marines occasionally, I think, probably went a step closer than some others. Uh, that's illegal. You know, if, if some inspector general comes, that's not. Obviously, they went either in the ocean or they went in the scrub around the latrine. So, Admiral Morrison said, what the hell are you doing? You know, you know. Another problem was that many Vietnamese refugees did not want to have their real They were looking for people they know, and eventually this was not at the time when computers, you know, this was 1975, computers were not what they are today. So we published lists, but obviously... I'm prepared, I, I admit. You look at old men. 
I should have brought the article and put it online and you could read, you know, what it means to have this mobile population. I, I have no idea how the Turkish military at the moment is It's a real problem. So how did you, how did they organize the camp? Do they have a family section, single section, uh, any uh, kind of segregation in by 1975 sex? In 1975 it was segregation by sex. You had males and females. So you brought but, up the family they, units? Yes. came from some people in Virginia. Uh, when you are faced with, you know, this burgeoning from zero to over 100,000, obviously, you have a problem. You have a problem with people looking for each other. You have a problem of families that want to stay together. You have a problem. What do you do with people who come with gold? I mean, we had to organize the Bank of Guam to send people. It's, it's a complicated business that people don't realize that today In some of my more recent work, and again, I, I'd be happy to let you read the article that was just published. Uh, of Chinese in Latin America is not Brazil. Most people think, well, Brazil, as you know, has a large Japanese population that is now Lima. We found that uh, in, in field work, where would you go to find I was sent there to look at Sendero Luminoso, you know, the shining path, who are Your task is to find out about Chinese in Peru. that Chinese pay about six to eight thousand dollars They receive the United States in some cases. <coughs> so this whole mobility of people across Switzerland is a country 
6 million Swiss, 2 million foreigners. The Bodens. In camps and people get medical checkups and, and it, it's it's a problem because it's a multicultural I mean in this small Swiss city uh, Kreuzlingen it's about maybe uh, 40,000 people they now have a refugee uh, facility for maybe 200 refugees which go all over the world from Africa, from Middle East, uh, some of the uh, India, Nepal. So this is becoming a real world problem. And if you are interested, the, the UN uh, Commission on Refugees obviously hires people now because <clears throat> what HDS does, the Commission on Refugees also has to do different different food habits. <clears throat> so what I want to do, what I want to start out with, is India and China. India has 1.2 billion people and China has 1.3 billion people. We are now a world population of roughly 7 billion, 7.3 billion, and we are decreasing, as I said yesterday, in Japan, for example, they're going down every year by 1 million, maybe. But in other countries, it's burgeoning. So I want to start out by using a uh, Pennsylvania State University program on world population to impress you and pay attention to India and China and follow it. This program goes from age zero. Our environment is the Earth. The Earth is finite. Its capacity is to provide space, to produce food, and to supply energy are all restricted. We depend upon these limited resources for survival. And yet we are increasing our population as if they were infinite. This dilemma is at the root of our most critical environmental problems. On this map, population growth will be recorded from the year 1 AD to the present and then projected to the year 2020. Population totals and locations are indicated by dots, each of which Thank you. 
Sorry, I have to call him. No, the Indian is Native Americans. Look at the population in the seventh century. Look at Europe. Seventeenth century. Look at that in Europe and India and China. <laughs> Today, that in your lifetime you will see maybe nine billion people. If you are less conservative, do with ten billion. If we can't manage seven billion today, if we have refugees as we do. So people are saying we are in Kansas where we are introducing and population
forward very uneven numbers. Why did China and India have so many people from early on? I mean, how did China get... China is about the size of the United States, same climate from North Cold, Manchuria, to Hainan, which is like Florida. So it's very similar to, to the United States, about the same size. China is slightly larger, but it has 1.3 billion people. We have, what's the population of the US? 300 million. You must know. 313 million roughly. What is the population of Kansas? Kansas is the size of three times Germany. Germany has 80 million people. And Kansas has 2.5 million people. You know, populations are distributed unequally. The problem of population is closely tied to the culture. Why do you think China and India were so successful in having these large populations in 16th, 17th, 18th century? You know, I, in my recent work in India, I found, and I heard it on the radio today, if you want to start a business, what is one business today in the Himalaya So, an entrepreneurial person would find that if you boil water, very rapidly because they had water systems. You know, if you go to Srinagar and you, you go to the north of India, you become aware that the great rivers of the world in Asia, where do they originate? The Himalayas. The Brahmaputra, you know, the Mekong, all of those huge rivers. What are the Chinese doing? They are damming these rivers, which means if the Vietnamese population of India and China can be explained. They have 1.3, 1.2 billion people because very early on they had a good food supply system and they had plenty Oceanside more than the inside right, Xinjiang, which is desert. So what I want Yes, globalization is turning into a worldwide movement. I mean, you can go on a bus in India and in China and in Europe and they're all texting to each other and so that is now kicking in obviously involves tech You don't agree with me, and I hope
this time it's just a small dot we are pulling out. Be questioned by his ex fellow members of the Senate. We are still the focus. If you have lived in Asia or Europe, <coughs> sorry, people are talking. We are still the major economy of the world. And yesterday, the stock market reached a five year high. not going to be necessarily Afghanistan and yes we will have problem with Iran, we will have problems with Iraq, we will have problems with Sunni versus Shia, we will have problems, we can't just leave the world. to look at China. There's no way. Last year, 108,000 students from China attended institutions of higher learning in the United States. 108. has about 850 Chinese and some of the chemistry lab wouldn't run without them and some of the sciences wouldn't have all the mathematicians. What are we doing? I mean, we can't just... So, in my view, what the military has to start thinking China, obviously, we should start right now. Every class, I, I just finished my, my MBA class at one student from China. Yeah. Oh. And one, 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 uh, person of Indian descent, but one student who came from China would go back to the United States. The good news is they weren't as smart. I think, uh, as I told you yesterday, being married to a Chinese from Taiwan, and as I also indicated, I started my life in a, in a Japanese kindergarten in, in uh, So my Chinese is my wife tells me, how come? I mean, you're so terrible. The Chinese is awful, you know. Why, why don't you shape up? And of course, I tell her, your Japanese is not very good either. You know, so it's constant. But she says, you know, forget the Japanese. It's, uh, you know, 126 million there. I think as an adult, you can't learn to be literate in Chinese. The, any of you know Japanese? You know, Japanese is a mixture of Chinese characters. have no grammar, well, I will explain it. But anyway, the, 
the Japanese made a decision in 1872 when Meiji became the emperor that they couldn't, they couldn't learn 5,000 or 10,000 characters. You know, that you have hundred Chinese characters. These are called Chinese, as you, some of you know, has five tones. So, Japanese is easier to learn for Westerners than Chinese, but the language late. You, know, you have to memorize Chinese characters. So, I think, why are we not beginning? This is going to be our, I hope it's not a military confrontation, but it's business, it's science. Warfare and nothing else but hacking. What would happen in Fort Leavenworth if the hackers go into electrical grids at Fort Leavenworth and we have no power. HDS would be up the creek. One requirement that may be part of HDS should begin today not yesterday, is looking at China. I want somebody to disagree with me. <laughs> Come on. Agu. I have a question. <laughs> and I was going to start teaching uh, Chinese and Arabic. You can now major in. But I hope you will agree that in your lifetime, competition and hopefully another military competition, we changed to China, uh, competition will come from China. It's not necessarily only Western Europe or Iran or Morocco or, or a business school that was. <clears throat> What I want to point out is, unfortunately, if you I hope you're still there, you will see the overwhelming collection of books and articles Europe, World War II and, and Iraq, but libraries reflect the culture of a country. So if you want the General Staff College, or Lessons Learned, or Think So for a
worry to see what sources are used. They are primarily historical sources. Most the graduate school of, of the Command and General Staff College are historians. How do you do events? I mean, you do a history because, so looking at World War So important. I told you about Admiral Morrison and the problems that I faced <laughs> as an actor. The first character of China is an arrow hitting the center of a target. Central. It's the character that denotes middle. That's why China is the middle Nixon in China. Mao didn't come to Washington, but Nixon went to China because China The second character actually is a city wall with a square with an arrow flying over the city wall coming in and as you well know that people in China learn today is taking What cultural problem does this in the fourteenth? Uh, non-tonal language related to Japanese rather than the Chinese. So the Koreans have the system they use Chinese that looks a little bit like this. It's called Hangul, H-A-N-G-U-L, Hangul is a kind of a phonetic system rather than a character-based system. It tells you a lot that people say, well, we look at Japanese, Chinese, and Koreans, they're all the same. Uh, 
I apologize. Can can all of you see this? Is I right on here? Or we can we can. Is this part of the So field work, even in you. And so for centuries, French and Germans have lived next to each other. Anybody knows French? Maybe you see it. Okay. What is peace in French? La paix. <laughs> the, the French, very much like Germans, Sex, you know, articles. La is the feminine article. La pay. So the French. Germans are doing. The Germans look at. Well, I'm sorry, but anyway. That can, that can help you. They are Frieden. Frieden is peace in German. And guess what they're doing? They are male. This is the male indicator. It's they are Frieden. So something. When you look at the moon and the sun, the moon in French, la lune, la lune. right? Uh, so the again, moon. the moon is sexed feminine. You know, the French do all the nasty things at night, feminine. The Germans, it's their moon. It's masculine. The moon is cold, and obviously it's masculine. <laughs> you know, the sun is warm. And so, what I want to tell you with that, to do any fundamental field work, the moment you begin to catch on a little. Masculine or feminine notes. On when you think about peace, when you think about the moon, the sun, and the two neighboring countries, just reverse it. The Germans have a very different imagination. It's like China, where obviously Jung, Jung, Wu, Jung. This is the central kingdom. Everybody comes to China. It's the mid. This is towards Afghanistan. You know, you have Xinjiang, the province where Uyghurs, the Muslims, live. But most of the Chinese, Han Chinese, like most people in Africa, they go close to the ocean. 
because the rivers you notice that up to now, this is Nepal. Guess what? The Chinese have built a railroad from Beijing to Lhasa, and they are now planning It means that for the first time in modern history, the Chinese are south of this wall of the Himalayas. They're now on this side. Next one. You can see the multiplicity of climates in China. It goes from the Himalayas and Tibet to Hainan in the south, where you can swim like swimming in Florida, where they're now building casinos and Macau, one of the most fabulous places to go. The gambling business in Macau, the casinos make more money Macau was for 500 years a Portuguese enclave on the mainland right off the mainland. So China is changing very rapidly. Probably a uh, 54 recognized minorities, as you maybe know well. The Uyghurs next to Afghanistan. You know, if you look at the map of Afghanistan, that long tail that goes into Xinjiang, this is the Uyghurs. Uyghurs that were fighting at one time in Afghanistan, and they were sent to Guantanamo. Population in the west of China. HDS program, where do we send Uyghurs when we don't want them at Guantanamo? Because Palau is an island. Anyway, so these are problems. Great deal about different cultures and countries. Uyghurs in Palau in, are very unhappy because. China and they want they want to states. This group.
imperial China. You you have to begin by learning that Just like the American military, they love numbers and codify. And was. In Chinese characters, even though the minorities obviously have minority languages, Uyghurs have Arabic, but in terms of China, they have one common language, written language. So many of you go to Chinese restaurants, food between Cantonese restaurants, which is south, and northern Chinese is very different. Cantonese is very different from Mandarin, which is the standard, but they have the same common written language. So all of them read the characters, meaning to them the same thing. The first, first united China, just think, you know, compared to the U.S. from 221 to 206 B.C. That's a long time ago. You have a unified, the last time. Chinese, they were Manchus from the border area. The Republic of China, founded in 1912. How many of you have seen the movie The Last Emperor? Okay, so you know what happened, you know. 1912, the Republic was declared. Of course, Taiwan, you know. I Please take it with a grain of salt. I'm prejudiced, I admit. Taiwan was Formosa, where the pirates from, from the Dutch pirates and the Portuguese pirates, they all came to Taiwan. They have an aborigine population that lives in the mountains of Taiwan. But Taiwan, in 1949, really became the refuge of the nationalist Chinese, Chiang Kai-shek, our ally in World War II. When the communists in 1949 uh, obviously triumphed, Chiang Kai-shek took mainland Chinese military to Taiwan, and Taiwan became the Republic of China. <laughs> And I must tell you a funny episode. In one of our trips to mainland China, uh, my wife was ahead of me going to the customs at Beijing airport. And uh, I was next uh, in line uh, behind her. And when you fill out the slip, entry slip into the country, she put down Republic of China. There was an explosion. The, the customs official shouted at her, how do you... It's the People's Republic. Put next to her and they looked at me 
and said, well, is this your wife? Uh, because she kept her Chinese name. And I said, yes, and they just, uh, you know, stupid, you know. People's Republic of China, founded in 1949. Of China. Next one. I have to go a little bit faster. Hong Kong Island became a British colony, as some of you know, after the Opium War. It was ceded to Britain and one of the Prime Minister at the time <laughs> would agree to extend the 100 year lease. But of course, uh, he had very different ideas. Make a long story short, Hong Kong, as many of you know, is now part of mainland China. The Brits are gone. So in July 1997, still a special autonomous region. That means in Hong Kong they still have democratic votes, quote unquote. You know. They say for the next 50 years, why did the Chinese do that? have slight autonomy, then maybe Taiwan would opt to come become part of the People's Republic with a slightly separate that, but if you go to Hong Kong, the first thing you see as you cross from Kowloon to to the People's Republic really a model for half a million. Taiwanese are in Shanghai. System. China, similar. I think the newest day Chinese Chinese Han Chinese are the uh, sorry. Thirty five percent of the land. 55, including Han, 54 minorities plus Han, so you have 55. When you learn Mandarin, standard Chinese, it's the Beijing dialect. Yeah. 
the green ones. Then Tibet. Well, compared to what? Uh, I mean, is it oh, as big as Kansas or as big as Delaware? I'd say uh, California. Delaware. Tibet is the same size as all of Western Europe. It's huge. But <laughs> so you can see, you know, obviously population is. Next one. That gives you an idea. The Han Chinese are all in the green area. Jing Huang He was the first emperor. He was pretty despotic. He burned scholars and books and all that. But what did he also do? Many things, how stuff. So, one day, the first emperor really, and look when this happened, you know. naturally superior to most other people because it's a very old culture. Next. First Emperor of China. Of a car, centralized administration. Memorize Chinese characters, you could it was based on literacy. Make the point. Afghanistan is primarily ethnicity, but they don't have, I mean, even today. President Karzai has always had either an emperor or a communist party leader. It's a mandate from heaven that is a unified And the cotton, you know, the army that you see, you know, if you think this was in the third century, tyrant, I mean, he burned. I wasn't there. I came back in 1936. 
publicly, you know. So they went to libraries and picked out all the books that they didn't like, and there was a public burning. Well, the Chinese emperor did the same. He buried alive 460 scholars. <laughs> I wonder, maybe we should do that at KU. <laughs> 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 and, and the Great Wall, the canal, and the soldiers, even though they were dead. Look at on radicals. <laughs> I I wonder if you remember when they drilled you, because in a dictionary. Uh, I wonder if I have one that really shows up. That red one, sir. Different red one. Yes. This one? No, sir. This one here should be. This one? Rocks, this one. This is. House. Okay. This is. Words in a Chinese dictionary, you have to know that this is a radical that is written with one, two, three strokes. Word in a Chinese dictionary. So when you have a character like this. Oh, sorry. Put that up in a dictionary, you have to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. How would HDS do? I mean, how would you do when the people who really are good at doing that? Are we doing this? So, a radical would be Earth, human. You know, a woman, when, when I write woman, don't think, what is the image in your brain? Do you know? Do you have anybody in mind? I mean, it used to be an Aaron Monroe or... Mom. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> the you know, <laughs> you know, the moment we see it because it's phonetic, right? Woman. What did the Chinese do? The Chinese character of a woman is this. What is this? It's a pregnant lady. So the Chinese think of woman. Just like Germans make a difference between a young woman, das Mädchen, which is neutral, das, die Frau, obviously a woman that is maybe married or has children. So, you know. The right to rule, heaven, the way of heaven, son of heaven, because this territory. 
three religions of China, I'm told. Kind of a the people's republic, but I'm told that some of the public teachings that the Dalai Lama get is now increasing Buddhist adherence in China. Uh, the Vatican, since 1949, has been waging a battle because Chinese could not get rid of all Christian Chinese. But they said, we want to have our own bishops, not determined by Rome, but determined by Beijing. They have been waging, I mean, a cardinal, how is a cardinal nominated? How does one become a cardinal? The Pope, right, determines who is a cardinal. Well, Beijing says, we want to do that. So, Tibet, for example, has three major that when the Dalai Lama dies, that Beijing will determine the new. It won't happen, but that's what they're hoping. So, these three great religions that are operating, plus Christianity, obviously, uh, operate in China today. I think if you know Chinese, there's a great difference between Chinese today who went to the Cultural Revolution. Today, the people that went to the Cultural Revolution, I think, are really people that are still suffering post-traumatic stress, you know, no doubt. So it's very important that you know about revolution and you know about political movements that influence the public culture. Next. Confucius, obviously, the University of Kansas has what is called a Confucius Institute. What is the Confucius Institute? There are 71 in the U.S. There are propaganda institutes for mainland China. The main Chinese at the Confucian Institute is a member of the Central Committee or approved by the Central Committee. So in the KU Confucius Institute, there's a Chinese. But KU gets $270,000 a year from the Chinese government, so they're very happy to have a Confucius Institute. Luckily, the person, one of the person that teaches China at Command and General Staff College, <laughs> knows about Confucian Institute, and <laughs> you better ask him. But anyway, what I want to tell you is that today the outrage money from approved by the Central Committee. So at the Confucius Institute, you can't give a talk on Tibet, obviously. You can't give a talk on Uyghurs. <laughs> you, you give a talk approved, you know. Otherwise, we won't give you the $200,000. So guess what happens?
those students are not exposed to all the views. Confucian cultural concepts. I mean, Chinese are still culturally deeply influenced. Confucius during the Cultural Revolution was a non-person. And for a while, they erected a statue. You know. So Confucius and every Chinese still has part of this cultural heritage or baggage, as the case may be. The loyalty, the filial piety, the kindness, righteousness, harmony, and all that. Hu Jintao, the last Chinese leader, declared that his reign or his time as the party chief and really the ruler of China should be harmonious in China, in other words, no conflict. Where did Hu Jintao begin his career? Among people. When you start learning Chinese, how many of you could remember You did it three years? It took me about a year and a half. Just to get the basics. You, you literally have to memorize, you know, the character for water, character for people, character as I point out. These are radicals that you must use in a dictionary because the dictionary. is the development of the Chinese language. You can see it started out maybe as a picture graph on bones, the oracle bones, and this became obviously the, you know, the sun. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Japan is written this way. This is Japan. The sun in our land of the rising sun. So you must know these radicals in order to be going anywhere with Chinese. Woman, obviously you can see the rain. Mountain. The moon. You know. Next one. These are how the Chinese language developed. You know. Next one. Just to give you an idea of the radicals, you know, tree. Metal, horse, a rodent, <laughs> a turtle. Look how complex the character. A fish, obviously, with water, stone, female. So, this gentleman who studied Chinese says exactly what I would say. Much of Chinese learning is based on. Memorization, memorization. But how do you write if you are an aviation mechanic? How do you write, please loosen the left hand up or not three turns with this kind of language? But they're going to the moon. Next. Repetition. So you start out with a tree. (laughs) 
So by adding, you know, the the same character. Yeah. Next one. But taking field notes, I, I don't know if you did field work in Taiwan. I mean, what I find difficult is that occasionally when they give you and you tell them, please write it down for me, that's how you transmit. But that is going to be the challenge to HTS in the future if they are going to be HTS in China. Next one. Uh, this is the name of my wife, Ling Long. <laughs> uh, Ling Long means a piece of jade when you, you know, put the metal against the jade, it makes a sound. Ling Long, Ling Long. But that is how she writes her name in Chinese. So this is the name of a female. Yeah. Next one. Computer. You know. Obviously, uh, the Chinese now use computerized system. You know, they use a keyboard. And you have experience? Yeah, I was in Japan and I was in uh, Hong Kong. Yeah. Yeah. So they now use, but as he well knows, it's a combination the keyboard will give you choices, right? And there were more days, one, two, three, two, three, four, five. They give you choices. You know, you want this character versus, and then they use Western keyboards, obviously. They have a phonetic, they have their own alphabet, a phonetic system called ba 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 ba. Each character is broken down into two or three of those characters. You type it in, and it will give you a list of which ones you can choose. That's, it's kind of a lengthy process if you're writing about the yeah, so you can't just type. It wouldn't be fast, but it's straight. My penmanship obviously <laughs> is not what it should be, but you learn to write, you know, the uh, vertical. <coughs> Comes and then the horizontal one, there is a real order in how you write Chinese characters that you must learn. You can't just start at one side of a, you know, of a character. You have to write it in sequence. So this character would start out with this, and then you add this, and then it adds, and eventually it becomes this character. And it's very important that you learn to sequence how to write the Chinese character. So we uh, only got 10 more minutes. Do you want okay. to stop here and take questions or continue? Okay. Well, obviously, you know, do two hour, two, one hour or two hours on China is impossible. Any questions? Yes, the question was maybe, but on average, uh, how many characters uh, does one have to learn in order to become fluent in Chinese? Uh, as I pointed out, in Japanese, you need about 1,800. My spouse tells me that even basic literacy demands you know about 5,000. At least you recognize them. You know this deals with something, wood, metal, whatever. So to be literate in Chinese, that's why they had the examination system, demands a high degree of memorization and literacy. What does that mean in modern technology? They're very good at memorizing. They're very good at mem 
mathematics, which is memorization, they are very good because that's part of the Chinese culture that you memorize <coughs> in the very beginning. Yeah. The, the vocabulary, the words that you threw up there, and I, I might have missed this. I saw a lot of objects. How do you how do you do functions like he did something, he said something, he broke a he broke okay. Something. Well, if I would have time, I would. But how do you, is there a way to write it versus a way okay. to speak it? Chinese. The you know, it's a continuation. <clears throat> so there is no grammatical indication of future or past. You have to deal with the context in which it is. So we have arguments. Does Chinese have a grammar? What do you think? Yeah, grammar, but it's quite <laughs> different than ours. Very good. You put se, you put to be in front of something. I mean, there's definitely places in the sentence yeah. structure. So there's really, it, it's the context that tells you this is the context.